church this morning. We had a great time in Sunday school today. If you couldn't be there, I hate that you missed it. Maybe you can make it next week. I'm sure would love to have you in Sunday school. And uh, we had a great time in our class, and I heard some good reports in the other classes as well this morning. Amen. Y'all smile a little bit. Just go like, talking about Sunday school. Uh, tonight is our family fun night. We've been talking about this all month. We have service this evening at 4 o'clock. After the service, we'll be going downstairs eating and um, playing some games. Brother Austin said he got some wiffle ball stuff. We can play wiffle ball tonight. We got some good things lined up for that. So we invite everybody to come back this evening and to stay afterwards for the family fellowship night. And you'll have a great time with that. We would love to see everybody there. Also, Saturday, March the 4th, we have a ladies' trip to Light Calvary Baptist Church. Please see Miss Christina Leiser for the details on that. And I think we still need some registration money. Where's she at? Did, it, did anybody, did everybody get signed up and paid? Good deal. Well, if you decide, if you haven't told her yet that you want to go, please see her today after church and get that taken care of. Our annual Jubilee is moving. It's, it's here. March 6th through the 10th. It's here. Um, I think that's next week. One week, right? Yeah. Be glad to get this off my announcement sheet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. March 6th to the 10th, our services will be at 7 o'clock each night. Uh, we will have morning services at 11 o'clock, and there will be a meal served every evening at 6 o'clock, and that will be a uh, blessing. Also, uh, Miss Joanne said that we're going to do the sign-up sheet for the kitchen help. That means if you want to get here early and cook or stay here afterwards and clean up, uh, we need to get everything taken care of and everybody schedule a time for that. Just go this morning on Facebook. Uh, right after the, the live morning service, they'll put a post on there to sign up uh, for that. If you want to help in the kitchen, those, uh, those nights uh, that we'll be having the meals during the annual Jubilee. Got some good preachers lined up to be preaching. And I've uh, been praying, praying about this and looking for God to do some special things uh, during that meeting. It's going to be a fun time. If you haven't made plans already, please make some plans to be here for that. And that'll be a blessing. If you're visiting with us today, we want to say thank you for coming. Amen. Of all the churches you could have stopped at this morning, you chose to come here. And we appreciate that. We don't take that lightly. We hope that you found a friendly place. And we hope also that you'll find a place That'll be noticeable in a few minutes that God is there. Uh, we have his presence and his power on the service today. And we'll all walk out of here better people if that happens. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take up our offering. We'll begin our worship service. Brother Keith, if you would please pray for the offering. Lord, thank you today, Lord. Thank you for all these visitors that you've got here today, Lord. It's just so exciting.
our uh, Sunday school lesson this morning. Brother Jeremy brought out a point about uh, grieve not the Holy Spirit, and uh, I was sitting over there and uh, thinking about the song that the choir is fixing to sing, I am so blessed, and I... Um, so blessed to have a church that pray for us as we travel my next to the oldest brother passed away we didn't lose him because we know where he's at but he passed away and uh, we had safe travel and uh, the whole family did and um, I just want to thank you for uh, for your prayers and for all that uh, y'all done for us while we were while we were gone. Uh, Debbie got sick on the way, but she's not here this morning. But uh, the old devil trying to fight. But I still want to say. I am so blessed. I stand here and think about just what he's done. Start counting my blessings one by one. I sure don't deserve all that he's done for me, but I'll praise him forever through eternity. I am amazed he take the time to give me such blessings to fill up my life. He is so good, I cannot express how thankful I Baby. 
just going to wing this one. Uh, I don't know that we've done, we, we ain't done it in a while. Um, but she played it for the offertory, and I want to, I want them to sing it. And uh, so if you're a visitor here, a guest here, this is just kind of what we do. I don't have a program uh, that says what time we got to be in. You know, I, we just go to church, you know. I, uh, so that's what we're going to do. I just feel like the Lord's going to bless this. Amen. And because uh, we've got so much to thank Him for, man. Listen, on our worst day, on our on our very worst day, we've got so much to be thankful for. It, it, listen, I think about Job, and I think about him sitting there in that pile of ashes. And the Bible says he was covered in sores and done lost his family, done lost all of his livestock, his livelihood, his home. His friends, even his wife done turned on him. And she's telling him, just curse God and die. And listen, he, 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 just, he just said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And listen, we've got so much, so much to be thankful for this morning. You say, well, I, I you know, everything ain't going my way. I just don't. Well, look beside you. Men. Look, look at that pretty wife you got sitting on your arm. I, I promise you don't deserve that. I promise. I, you know, I don't know what she was thinking when she saw you, but I, you know, amen. But, but here you are, and and you got your babies with you. You got your, you got family. You say, well, I'm here by myself. Well, you're in church. You're not in hell. You're not in the hospital. You're not sitting in a jail cell. Some of you might have been last night, but you got bonded out this morning. That's something to thank him for, amen. The judge gave you a bail, amen. We've got a lot to thank him for. We're going to sing his song. Y'all just worship the Lord, amen.
I'm going to try not to get excited this morning, but I just might. Amen. Because, I listen, I don't deserve nothing but hell. I don't know about you, but when God found me, listen, I was on a steady road straight to hell. Listen, I had no way, listen, no hope. No help, nothing in this world uh, to lean on, nothing in this world to depend on. Uh, But then one day, listen, I nailed at an altar and met Jesus Christ. He saved my soul from hell, and nothing's ever been the same since then. Amen. He's so good. We're going to baptize here in a little while. I'm going to baptize Brother Larry. He's got a crew with him this morning. I'm going to tell this, and I hope you're okay with it. We was, uh, we was out there at our last, one of our fellowship, family fellowships, and Brother Larry kind of, he ain't done this but a couple times, and it scares me, Brother Doug. He's a real quiet, you know, individual. Don't say much. And He come up to me, he said, I got, I got something I want to talk to you about. And I thought, oh, man. He's going to straighten me out. And uh, I said, well, let's talk. He said, well, I'd rather just go somewhere like your office where it's quiet. And I thought, man, he's really going to straighten me out. And, uh, man, we got in there. and He just, tears started running down his face. And he said, I want to tell you something I ain't never told nobody before, no other human being on this earth. He said, I just, I never have been able to do it. And he proceeded to tell me about the day he got saved. <laughs> he said, you know, I just couldn't hold it in anymore. He said, I, I just started thinking about how good God was to me and what all he's done in my life and what he's doing in my family. He said, I, I couldn't hold it in anymore. <laughs> Amen. Listen, something big as God moves in. You ain't going to be able to hide it too long because it's going to start sticking out somewhere. And listen, you say, what's all them tears about? Well, that's just the Lord. That's just how good he's been. And I just get overwhelmed sometimes thinking about how good God is. And man, the fact that he would come by and save somebody like me, just an unworthy, undeserving, ungrateful sinner. Listen, man, what amazing, what an amazing God we serve. And there's been time and time and time again that I've let him down. That I've dropped the ball. That I've ruined my testimony. That I've I've fallen short. But every single time he's there to pick me back up and dust me off. Because I'm his son. He's my father. Now I think about boy of mine, Bo, and man, I'll get on to him about the same thing about 20 different times in a day. That's just, you know, some of y'all with kids, y'all can say amen right there. You say, I just whoop him. Well, I I do, and he still does. He still repeats himself sometimes. But you know, Brother Mac, every time I look at him, I don't think about the mistakes that he makes. And I don't think about the the window that he broke or the rod and reel that he broke. I I don't think about, I just think that's my boy. And I love him. And he's mine. And he's always going to be mine no matter what. And I think about how sorry I am. You hear me? I think about how sorry I am as a Christian and the fact that he still loves me and the fact that he would still have anything to do with me. Man, what, how amazing of a God we serve. Amen. I'm going to preach here in just a minute. I'm going to preach here in just a minute out of the book of Acts. King Agrippa told Paul, he said, Speak for thyself. I'm going to preach on speak for yourself here in just a minute. But I, I think about that. He said, Paul, here's your chance. Speak for yourself. Let me ask you this question. If somebody came to you this morning and said to you, speak for yourself. 
not, not, you can't go off of what mom and daddy says. Can't go off of grandma and grandpa. What do you say? What have you done? Listen, what have you done with the Lord? You know, that day Brother Larry come testified to me. You know what that was? He was telling me what he'd done with the Lord. Speaking for himself. You know, Brother Benny stood here a minute ago. He's, he's testified many times about the preacher that come to his house and chased him down and, and won him to the Lord when he was a young boy, 16, I believe. And you know what that is? That's speaking for himself. The Bible says every man is going to give an account for themselves. You're going to have to stand before God and answer for yourself. One day we're going to stand before a thrice holy God the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you know what we're going to have to do, Brother Joe Tool? We're going to have to speak for ourselves. What a scary thought. It, it, it scary. I don't know about you. Y'all might y'all, y'all look a little bit more dignified and better than me. But I, I know this. That thought scares me. For me to have to give an account for all the things that I've done. And all the wrongs that I've made. But we do have an advocate with the Father. A go-between. That says, you know what? He's my son. You ever <laughs> I think about I think about these, I watch these cop shows on TV. And these guys get arrested. The first thing they do is I want my lawyer. They say, well, you must be guilty. I say, I want my lawyer. I want my attorney. And sometimes that, that lawyer show up and say, you don't speak to him. You you talk to me. And that word advocate is the same thing as an attorney. It's the same thing as a counselor. When he shows up, don't ask me no more questions because I ain't got nothing to say to you. Talk to my attorney. <laughs> and he's going to tell you that, well, I see the charges, but um, they've been forgiven. I see the charges are here, but but on this day of 2006, August the 27th, it says right here that they were redeemed, never to be remembered. Amen. Um, it says here that they're under the blood. There's nothing else. And you know what we do a lot of times? Y'all just bear with me. You know what we do a lot of times? We'll just, we we keep bringing our own stuff back up. We blame it on the devil a lot of times, but most of the time it's our own self throwing that stuff back up. Remember when you did this? Remember when you did that? Remember when you did? And the Lord don't even know what you're talking about. The Bible says that your sins have been cast into the sea of forgetfulness. Listen. Never to be remembered as far as the east is from the west. Hey, listen, they're gone, friend. And we walk around defeated all the time with our head down because we know what we are and that's okay. But I want you to know that God ain't looking at you that way. Some of y'all sitting in here this morning, you say, I don't belong in church. You're right, none of us do. We don't deserve to be able to sit in the presence of God. But you're here because of the goodness and the grace and the mercy of an almighty God. And let me just say this, and I'm going to let them sing. This ain't no fairy tale. Y'all have to excuse my language if some of y'all are English teachers. But this ain't no fairy tale. This is the real thing. If I, if I had the time this morning, Brother Ricky, I could stand up and let people testify one right after the other how God brought them out of drugs or God brought them out of alcohol or God brought them out of this or that. And they could testify one right after the other, one right after the other, one right after the other about what God's done. And let me just say this. There's no program. There's no medication. There's no counselor. There's nothing that can do the work that God has done in the lives of some of these people that are sitting in here this morning.
Amen. It's all about Him. It's all about what He's done. Amen. Today I faced a mountain Once again it seemed so tall I tried to climb But it seemed I'd surely fall So I knelt and called on upon this journey since the day that I first met him many times his love and mercy have rescued me so once again I'll come before him one more time I'll stand to praise him for all his blessings yes he chapter number 26 Acts chapter number 26 if you got your Bibles with you if you do not have a Bible it will be on the screen I want to say again to all of our visitors thank you for coming today we are so grateful to have you glad you're here and you always, I hope you always feel welcome here and wanted here because you are we don't take our visitors lightly, man. We take it very serious. Uh, there's a million churches. Uh, I mean, you could throw a rock and hit one just about from here. And uh, But you chose to come here. Amen. And we hope you feel welcome. We hope you feel uh, appreciated uh, to be here. And we're glad. We're so glad that you're here. Don't forget about the Jubilee. Now, that's, that's going to be a big week for us. Very important week, and uh, I promise you, these preachers are are they're excited. Um, they're they're ready to come, and uh, they're they're ready to be here and just see what God's going to do. And uh, so don't don't miss it. Okay, the the one service that you missed, the one night or morning that you could have been here that you didn't come, um, might be the very message that God's got just for you. And uh, and, and you know, I I, I pray that uh, our church members will be faithful, be here, be in your place, and 
and we're going to have a good a good week. I'm excited about it. Um, we're getting everything together, all the meals and everything prepared. And, uh, and also, I would ask you, uh, you know, just to pray about maybe if the Lord would have you to give towards the meeting. We we've all, we we we're, we're just short of what we need as far as financially for the meeting. Uh, but we'll, you know, God's going to provide, and He'll 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 do what He always does. Uh, but I would ask that you would uh, maybe pray about giving towards the jubilee, and uh, so that we can make sure that these preachers are taken care of in hotel rooms, things like that, uh, that we're going to have to buy, uh, pay for. Okay, is everybody in Acts twenty six? Amen. All right. Also, don't forget about your faith promise giving. Um, uh, those envelopes that you see in the pews in front of you, there's a little uh, section for missions there. Uh, if you would uh, make sure you're, you're whatever it is you you promised, whether it be weekly or monthly, uh, that you're sticking with that, so we can take care of all of our missionaries. Okay. All right. Uh, Acts chapter number 26, verse number one. Acts chapter 26, verse number one. Then Agrippa said unto Paul. Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. That portion there where it says Paul stretched forth his hand, it was almost as, as if Paul were saluting King Agrippa. Uh, he was very respectful of the position of King Agrippa. Uh, he may not have uh, totally agreed with what he was or what kind of a king he was, but Paul was always, always, even as you read on throughout uh, the epistles that Paul wrote, he was always very respectful of the position of those that were above him. Even if he agreed with them or didn't, he was always very, uh, give honor where honor is due, and he would always respect. So that's, uh, it, maybe you were wondering, maybe you weren't, but when, when it says that Paul stretched forth his hand, that was almost as if he was saluting him or saying thank you, uh, and giving him honor and then he the Bible says and answered for himself he said I think myself happy King Agrippa because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews and we can tell here in this testimony as we go on through here that this testimony from Paul was very well thought out it wasn't just uh, uh, you know uh, just uh, he got up there and just, just you know, let it rip like we do sometimes, like I'm guilty of. But uh, it was very well thought out, or very well articulated, uh, because he was standing before the king, and there was a lot of accusations towards Paul, and he he addresses these things, and uh, so this is a very well thought out testimony from Paul. He said, especially because I know thee. To be expert in all customs. That's exactly why it was well thought out. He he knew that who he was talking to uh, knew what, what he was talking about. And questions which are among the Jews, wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews. Now I want you to picture Paul standing before King Agrippa in this council. So he's standing here, and I want you to I want you to picture in your mind Paul standing before these men, and in verse five he he begins to say, which which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee, is what Paul's saying. And now I stand here, he's saying, I stand here today and am judged for the hope of the promised. Made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night, hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? And this is where he begins to speak of the Lord, talks about God. Why, why do you think it's so incredible? Uh, that God would raise the dead. He's saying that he's God. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. This is what he's saying right here. He's saying, I myself 
have thought many things. I, I was always against Jesus. He was saying before he was saved, he was contrary. He was against God. He was against Jesus of Nazareth. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem and many of the saints did I shut up in prison. He's saying I imprisoned many saints that were representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. Having received authority from the chief priest and when they were put to death. Put them to death. I gave my voice against them. And I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority and common uh, commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven. Above the brightness of the sun shining around about me and them which journeyed with me and when they were and when we were all fallen to the earth I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue Saul Saul why persecutest thou me is it hard for thee to kick against the pricks and I said who art thou Lord and he said I am Jesus whom thou persecutest But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of of these things which thou hast seen, and those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. And from, uh, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient under the heavenly vision. Now, I want you to understand something right here. A lot of people I've heard many times, uh, if it's okay with y'all, I'm going to take my jacket off. I've heard many times a lot of folks would say, uh, well, Paul didn't really have a choice. That the light came from heaven and God pretty much knocked him to his knees. And uh, what what are you going to do? But the Bible said right here, delivering, uh, he said, whereupon King Agrippa, I was not disobedient, amen, under the heavenly vision. Means, which means to tell me that he had a choice. He had an option. He could have said, no, I'm not going to do that because I don't believe in you. I'm against you. As a matter of fact, I persecute those that believe in your name. Now, I don't know that it might would have turned out too good for him right there, uh, but that's he had the option to do so. But he said at that point, I was, I was obedient. I followed. I, did, I was not a disobedient to the heavenly vision. But showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they, should, that they should repent and turn to God and do the works meet for repentance. How about that? We have a man here who has, the Bible says in his own mouth, from his own mouth, said from my youth, was I disobedient? Was I against the things of God, against Jesus of Nazareth? I was against those things. I did not follow God. I, was, I, I hated Christians. I persecuted them, put them in prison, also put them to death. And now he's preaching the gospel. All because of a head-on collision with the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21, for these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. You see what he's saying right there? He said they caught me, they were going to kill me, but having help of God, I continue this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first and that, and that should rise from the dead.
and show light from the people and to the Gentiles. And as thus spake for himself, as he thus spake for himself, Vesta said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. I've been told that. But Jesse, you got beside yourself. Amen. At this point, I imagine Paul's got some tears running down his face. And he's probably moved from that little spot he was in. And he might have done loosened up his tie just a little bit. And he done lost his coat. And he's over there saying, let me tell you something, King Agrippa. He said, I hated Christians. I was, and now he's saying, I get to preach the gospel with the help of the Lord. He said, there's been Jews that come up against me trying to kill me. Hey, there's been people that's caught me, thrown me in prison, tried to kill me. He said, but, he said, but King Agrippa, I stand here today with the help of the Lord. And I'm able to preach the gospel, uh, both the small and the great. He said, I, can, I, can, I, I get to move around and, uh, uh, to the uttermost parts of the world. I can preach the gospel. Festus says, hold on a minute now. You don't got beside yourself. Amen. Think about the other night, Brother Matt got beside himself. He's in here testifying and it got on and Brother Mac done made his way from the back back here and he done walked all the way up through here, had the microphone in his hand and I said, he's, he's testifying. He's speaking for himself. And it says, verse 25, and he said, I'm not mad, most noble Festus, but I speak forth the words of truth and soberness. He said, I know what I'm saying. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. He said, he knows what I'm talking about. He knows who I was. He can testify for me. That he knows, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from me. What he's saying is, everybody here knows what I'm about. They know that I'm a Christian. They know my testimony. For this thing was not done in a corner. It ain't hidden. They know about the day that on that road to Damascus where I met the Lord. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? He's saying, you believe what the Bible says, King? He said, I know that thou believest. And what he's saying there is, Agrippa, you believe what this book says? And he says, I know you do. You know this book's right. And then, one of the saddest verses in this book in my opinion, one of the saddest verses in this King James Bible is verse 28. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost, Paul. It was very persuading, your testimony. Had a lot of, had a lot of energy and a lot of power behind it, but but I'm King Agrippa. And I could maybe imagine that he thought in his mind, I'm not going to sacrifice my position. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take a chance in sacrificing what these Jews think about me because this man that just testified has been persecuted. He's been thrown in prison. They've tried to kill him. Now, if I become what he is, what's going to happen to me? He thought about the realities of what had happened to Paul, how good God had been, the fact that he saved his life, saved his soul from hell. And he said, man, it's good, but it, it's just not that good. Almost. Let me tell you what we've got today in our churches is a lot of those almost Christians. Listen to me. Some of you have sat in church your whole life. 
Some of you were raised under the shadows of a steeple. Some of you could quote this book better than I can. Some of you know the references, you know the verses. If, if you were to really truly come to a place where you were needing to be saved, you probably know the verses to go to yourself. You've been to Sunday school. You've been to church. You know what church is about. You know the vocabulary. You know what to say when you're at church. You know what to say when you're around church people. Listen to me. You know what to say when you're around the Christians. And you know how to talk when you're around the non-Christians. You know the lingo. You know uh, when the preacher's around what to say, what not to say. You know how to act. You know what to say when that person from church comes and knocks on your door to visit you. You know exactly what to say to get them to go away. When that family member calls and says, Hey, you coming to church this week? You know exactly what to say to get them to leave you alone. And then even if you do decide to come, and you sit through church and you sit through a message and you sit through the preaching of the gospel and you hear the clear presentation of the gospel that there is a real heaven and that there is a real hell and if you die without Christ you're going to end up in hell and you sit through that time and time and time again and you know what's right, you know what's wrong, you know what the testimony is but yet you still almost are persuaded. But the truth is that there is no almost heaven. There is no almost hell. When I got saved, when I got saved, I didn't almost get out of hell. I got fully. I'll never see that place. I'll... Brother Mac, I'll never, I'll never know what it's like to smell what hell smells like. I'll never know what it's like to see the flames. I'll never know what it's like to hear the screams. I'll never know what it's like to smell uh, the burning. I'll, ne- I'll never know. I'll, I'll never set foot there. I'm not even going to get close to there. The only time I'm going to see the lake of fire is when I'm standing before God. And, and listen. When they call the dead dead out of hell to judge them. And they get thrown. Only time I'm going to get to see the lake of fire is when I watch my father throw Satan bound in chains straight into hell. I'm going to ask him if he'll let me get a leg. And just one, two, three. That's the only time I'm ever going to see it. So well, one day we're going to die and stand before the pearly gates and pop, they're going to look for our name and they ain't going to find, it ain't like that. That's TV. You're not going to stand there at the gate and say, well, you know, I. no, if you die without Christ, you go straight to hell. You say, Brother Jesse, that's just harsh. Well, that's just real. If I didn't believe it, I'd quit. I'd quit. If I didn't believe it, Brother Todd, I'd put that Bible down and I'd be fishing today. But I believe it to be true. Why? Because just like Paul, there was a day, a moment in a church house where I met the Lord. We see the testimony of where he was, verses 1 through 12. He talks about all the things that he had done. Where he came from. And how God changed his life. And I've sat in here with many of you and heard your testimony of how you were saved. About 
Brother Ricky getting saved upstairs by Brother Jeremy. Leading to the Lord. How it all started with Brother Eddie coming to get coming, got saved, got baptized. And now from that, your whole family is sitting in church. That's a that's you know what that is? That's a testimony. I think about I think about Brother Todd, how Brother Ed went to eat dinner with him. He didn't want to get saved in the restaurant. He went out in the front seat of his truck. Brother Ed, Brother Ed led him to the Lord right there in his truck. And now his boy's sitting up here. And he's got a little baby sitting there. He's got kids, grandkids in church. That's a testimony. I think about my wife, when she was nine years old, and they were at church, and they were singing the invitation over and over. And her daddy stood up and said, well, let's sing one more verse. I think there's somebody here that needs to be saved. And she's sitting on her mama's lap, got born again. That's a testimony. I think about those that are in here that a bus came by where you were. Picked you up and brought you to church. I think about Miss Lindsay's testimony. How through foster care, foster care was brought here just as a visitor. And upstairs, she said in her own words that Miss Beth led her to the Lord upstairs. And then she was sent away. I, I don't we did a whole podcast on it. And I'm, I can't wait till it comes out. But, but she said that she was sent away to a girl's home and thought that it was over. That nobody cared about her anymore. She was gone. But that brother Todd must have said he went and got her from that home. Brought her home. And she sits in here this morning. It's a testimony. testimony and I hate I, I don't hate to tell it but I hate to tell it because I tell it all the time but I think about me when I was a boy 16 years old and my uncle a preacher come by and brought me to church drug me to church And I was sitting about halfway back and a preacher got up preaching. I got under conviction, come to an altar and got saved. Never been the same. If I, could, if I took a microphone around here this morning and handed it to you, if I took it to Brother Austin, I said, Brother Austin, speak for yourself. You know, Brother Austin grew up under a preacher home. Yeah, he's one of them preacher kids, like mine, mean. Mean, mischievous. But you know what? He would have to stand and he couldn't talk about his granddaddy, who was a preacher. And he couldn't talk about his daddy, who was a preacher. And he couldn't give his mama's testimony. He would have to give his testimony of where God found him. Brother Joe, if I brought you a microphone, I, you wouldn't be able to give me your father-in-law's, although it is good, or your mother-in-law's, which is a wonderful testimony. But you would have to give me your testimony. Y'all with me? I've done lost my points. Testimony where he was, testimony of what God did. And then he began to talk about what God was doing in his life. He began to tell about how he was preaching the gospel and doing what God had called him to do. And at this point in verse 27... The decision is then laid in the lap of Agrippa. 
the ball was in his court. You listening? The ball was then put in his court. Paul said, okay, Paul. Or he said, okay, king. He took a microphone and he handed it to, to King Agrippa. He said, all right, here, it's your turn. He said, I know you believe this book. And I know you believe what God's done in my life because you've known me, King, since I was a boy. You've known me. You knew my daddy. And you knew where we came from. And you know how mean I was. And you know all the Christians and all the people that I persecuted, threw them in prison and killed them. You know that, King. You, and you believe, and you can't sit here this morning, King, and you can't tell me that God didn't do something in my life. There's no way you can deny that fact. Because you've seen what God's done. How do you explain the change, King? How do you explain the fact that, that I turned a complete 180 and now instead of persecuting Christians, I'm preaching the gospel? Responsible for writing a lot of books that are in this Bible. Essentially having Bible colleges and seminary schools. Leading people to the Lord. How do you explain that, King? What do you say? He said, well, almost. Essentially, he was saying, I, I don't deny what God's done in you, Paul. I don't deny that. Because I see that. I see the works. Let your works, let your works so be done before men so they might glorify your Father which is in heaven. I butchered that verse, but y'all know what I'm saying. They see, I see the good, Paul. I see it. I see that you've made a change. But you know what? It's not good enough for me. Almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. Hope y'all visitors ain't nervous. I just get down here with y'all sometimes. If I see y'all not paying attention, I just get back here with you. I get amongst you. Hey man, I'll sit in one of y'all's lap if y'all ain't careful. <laughs> Kiss one of y'all on top of that bald head. Wake you up. Hey man. Brother Morris. Brother Morris, like, you can try to kiss me on my head. <laughs> but you know what happened to me the night that I got saved? I'm done. When y'all come. Brother Shannon, I heard the story of the gospel. I heard that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you know what that did for me? Persuaded me. I thought, you know what? That story's good enough for me. That's what I want right there. You know what happened? Brother Doug, I finally found the one thing I was missing in my life. It wasn't the fact that I didn't have no daddy growing up. I thought that would, I thought if I could find, if my mom could find the right guy and I could have a dad, man, that'd be, that'd be, that would fix everything. But that wasn't what I was missing. I thought, you know, if my mom would take me to the right school and I could get in the right football program and I could, man, I could really progress. That, that would be what I need. Tried that, didn't work. We moved, we moved two states away from my mama to put me in a football program. Which is not legal to do, you know, recruiting from the states and all, but we did it. Moved all the way up there because the coaches wanted me to come play ball. That didn't fix it. That didn't do nothing. As a matter of fact, it only got worse, Brother Larry. I got worse. 
Baal didn't do it. All the, the guys in, in my life I thought was going to be my dad, they didn't fix nothing. Chasing these dreams and chasing all. But then one night in a little old church, had two sections of pews about like this right here and the ugliest red carpet and windows you've ever seen. I'm not talking about like this red. I'm talking about blood red. Ugly church. Paneling on the walls. And all of a sudden, bam, there he was. As a matter of fact, he met me in the parking lot. We pulled up and a young boy that I had known all my life come running up to my uncle's car. He said, I want to tell you something. He said, uh, I got saved tonight. I mean, we church hadn't even started yet. He said, I got saved just now in choir practice. And he told my uncle, he said, I wanted you to know because you've been my Sunday school teacher since I was a boy. And that hit me. I'm sitting there in the passenger seat mad about having to be at church. And then he tells him that. And all of a sudden, it was like the Lord said, what about you? That boy grew up in church. He just got saved. You don't know nothing about church. You better check up on yourself. And I remember sitting in there, and there was a little old lady named Miss Margaret. Her husband's name was Ray Hammett, played basketball for Duke University, had hands like that. And he'd shake your hand, your hand would just disappear. Miss Margaret come up and she said, Are you sick? During the handshaking. She said, She said, Are you sick? You look sick. I said, Miss Margaret, if I could just get out of here, I'll be fine. She said, Well, you probably know what you need to do then. And I said, Miss Margaret, she said, she, and then she opened her Bible, and in the top right hand corner was my name. And she said, I've been praying for you for so long to get saved. And I said, What are you talking about? What do you mean? And then that trio got up to sing. And I was sitting for the first time ever, I don't know why was sitting between my aunt and uncle never did because they kept me in line most of the time I'd sit in the back and play cards with this girl back here on the back pew but I sat between them my aunt reached over and showed me she said I love you Jess I love you and that old hard heart of mine started to break and then that preacher got up in the middle of that song and he began to just a little preach, a little testify, you know. And he pointed that finger back there. It was like it was 30 foot long. And he said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he said, it don't matter where you come from. It don't matter who you are. It don't matter what your last name is. He loves you. And he wants to see you go to heaven. And I broke I run to the altar about right here, got down, and my cousin, who's a preacher, he's, he's preaching right now in North Carolina, he's a pastor, got up beside me, he said, I've been praying for you since we was 10 years old, <laughs> and he said, you know what to say, you know the verses, and that was it, and he walked away, he left me. He said, you know what to do. You've been here long enough. And all I could say, Brother Austin, was Lord save me. Lord save me. Lord save me. I don't want to die and go to hell. And I'm telling you right now as I stand here, when I got up from that altar, I was a different person. I wasn't the same. Is that for me? Reese stole it earlier. She was using it as a blanket for a baby. I've never been the same since here's my question to you listen to me listen, listen carefully 
I'm going to do you just like Paul did, King Agrippa. What do you say? What do you say? What are you, what are you doing with the Lord? Are you almost persuaded? Are you an almost Christian? Or is there a time, just like Brother Larry, is there a time where you can tell me, forget me, where you can go to the Lord and say, Lord, remember that night? Remember that day when I bowed myself down and I accepted you as my Savior? That's my story. That's my testimony. Some of you in here this morning, you've never done that. You've never, there's never been a time, there's never been a moment, there's never been a time in your life, a day, or you don't have to know the date, but there, you better believe there better be a moment you remember that you bowed yourself down and you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Being a good person ain't going to do nothing. You can be in church all you want, be a good person. Still die and go to hell. Be a member. Be a Sunday school teacher. Be a deacon. Be a preacher. In Matthew chapter 24 it talks about them preachers. That said, Lord, didn't we prophesy in thy name, do many wonderful works? And he said, depart from me, I never knew you. What are you going to do? Let's all stand. What are, what are you doing with him? If we were to come to every one of you with a microphone right now and say, what do you say? Tell us about when you were saved. Tell us about when you got born again. Would there be a would there be a time? Would there be any any idea at all in your mind of a moment, of a day, of a time when you got saved? I'm gonna tell you this: the Lord's coming back real soon. Believe it or not, like it or not, like we used to say when we was kids. Ready or not, here I come. That, that, that's, about, that's about where he's at. He said, how do you know? Because this book has prophesied of everything to come. And he is coming. He's coming. You say, well, what if he don't? Well, the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. You might be in here this morning. You're not promised tomorrow. The Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You're not promised tomorrow. You might be on your way to work tomorrow. God forbid something happened. You might be on your way home from church here in just a few minutes. And God forbid something happened. You not make it home. What say you? Let's bow our head and close our eyes this morning. Nobody looking around. They're going to sing here in just a minute. And I want to ask you this question before they sing. I promise you, nobody's looking but me. It's just me. And I want to say this before I ask it. You're not in a church this morning that's going to criticize you. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to drag you out of your seat kicking and screaming. This is strictly just between you and the Lord. It's not about us. It's not about me. This is between you and God. I want to ask you this question, the most important question anybody's ever going to ask you in your life. Do you know beyond the shadow of a doubt, 100% beyond the shadow of a doubt that if you were to die, at this very moment that you'd go to heaven if you say I don't know that for sure preacher will you pray for me would you just slip up your hand say preacher that's me I don't know for sure if I were to die today that I'd go to heaven I see that hand any others alright if you're watching this video you've just watched one of our services here at Grace Baptist Church and our number one desire is to see sinners come to know the Lord as their Savior and uh, I'll read something from the Bible here in 1 John chapter number 5, verse number 13. The Bible says that these things have I written unto you 
that believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is what I like, the most important part, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And that's our number one goal at Grace Baptist Church is for people to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that they have eternal life through Jesus Christ. The book of Ephesians, chapter number 2, verse number 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, that's an, that's a to me, those two verses are two of my most favorite verses in the Bible because it, it it's it's a simple plan. For by grace are you saved through faith, that we put our faith and our trust in that gift, and that's the gift of Jesus Christ from God to this world. Uh, you know, the only way that we could go to heaven um, is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He's, it's the only way uh, to have uh, access to heaven is through accepting Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Uh, you know, a lot of people are mistaken today, and they think that, uh, you know, being a good person, attending church, or maybe even tithing or giving money to the church uh, uh, gains them access to heaven. But in reality, uh, the only way that we can have access to heaven is through Jesus Christ, the door. And he is the only way. He said, I am the way. And uh, and I want to invite you today that if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I would ask that you would take this time to bow your head and, 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 and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart and pray a simple prayer. I'm not I'm not going to give you the exact words to pray. It's It's a prayer between you and the Lord. But I would say that you would just... Model the prayer after this, Lord, I'm a sinner, and I realize that without you, I have no access into heaven. Without you, I have no way uh, to forgive my sins. And Lord, I invite you to come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, and become my Savior. If you would pray something similar to that, and mean it from the bottom of your heart, and have full faith and trust in Jesus Christ, he'll do that. He said that he would. Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you do that today, we would love to hear from you. If you would, just send a message to our church Facebook page, call us or send us an email, and we'd love to have the feedback and know that someone accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. If we can do anything for you here at Grace Baptist Church as far as prayer or whatever, just give us a call. Reach out to us. Let us know. If you have any questions about salvation, you can always call our office or reach out to us online, and we'll be glad to help you with that. Thank you. God bless. This sinner was plunged beneath the flood and God saved. Since then I walk in forgiveness, all of my guilt was erased. The chains of the past are broken at last, I got saved, oh I got saved. I'm redeemed by the mercy of Jesus, I'm amazed by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. How could I want more? I've received nothing but Lord's working. Won't you let him work in your heart? Tasted and tasted your Won't you let him do something in you? I was so lost till I fell at the cross and God saved. Oh, I got saved. They're going to they're gonna keep singing here in just a second, but heads bowed and eyes closed. I want to say this. First time I walked into a church, I was I, when I was 16, I was hard. I hated church. I hated church people. I hated the preacher. I hated the singing. I didn't want nothing to do with it. It wasn't for me. Church wasn't for me. 
But man, I, I come to the realization that without Christ, I was going to die and go to hell. And that's all I was worried about. And then after that, I got saved. And after that, God began to change me and soften my heart and began to change who I was. You say, I don't want God to change who I am. You say that now until it starts happening and you're grateful. I want to ask this question one more time. I don't care if you're on the altar. I don't care if you're in your seat. How many of you would be willing to just slip up your hand and say, Preacher, I don't know beyond the shadow of a doubt 100% that I'm saved. There's never been a day, there's never been a moment that I recall that I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Would you please just slip up your hand and say, Preacher, that's me. Will you pray for me? Is there anybody else? We've had several come already this morning. Is there anybody else? So, preacher, that's me. That's me. Listen, we're going, they're going to sing one more verse. And I'm going to go in just a minute and get ready to baptize. I know it's, I know we're, it's long. I know. If you need to step out, you can. If you need to leave, it's, it's okay. Just do it quietly. They're going to sing one more verse. Listen, this stuff's important. Souls are important. Your soul is important. You're at a crossroads right now. You're, you're at a place to make a decision. Am I going to follow Him? Or am I going to keep living for myself and take a chance and roll the dice? They're going to sing one more verse. I'm redeemed by the mercy of Jesus. I'm amazed by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. I put I want more. The love of God gave me his pardon. The love of God won't let me stay the same. The love of God pulls me up higher. His will is stronger. That's why I got saved. I'm redeemed by the mercy of Jesus. I'm amazed by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus, but I want more. Amen. Several, several get a couple get saved this morning. They're filling out. Dustin got saved this morning. Amen. Hey. You know, we last night y'all be seated. We about to baptize y'all be last night. Me and my wife were, uh, Brother Larry, whoever's getting baptized, if y'all want to start making your way, Brother Larry, if you'll go up this side, men on this side, ladies on this side, am I baptizing anybody else? Just Brother Larry. All right. Come on, brother. You got He got saved on our big day. Hey. Alayla, she got saved this morning. Hey. Amen. Hey. Amen. Follow hey. Brother Larry. Amen. Two born again this morning. Listen, I want to I want to tell you, don't leave here without knowing. Don't leave here without knowing. And uh, uh, last night, it just if it could have went wrong in our house, it went wrong. I had three sinks at one time leaking water. You say, how does that happen? Well, you get me as a plumber, and I'll show you. Went to Lowe's twice. Still ain't got it fixed. I mean, just water in the floor. And I'm thinking, man, what in the world is going on? The devil just fighting. Get up this morning and still fighting. You know, Brother Christopher and Brother Jeremy, we have a little group. Uh, uh, th- it's not a text, but it's like it's called Marco Polo. We go back and forth. We talk a little video. We, t- we have a group thing going. And we was talking, and that both of them said the same thing. Man, the devil's fighting me. God must be getting ready to do something big. And I got text messages this morning from preachers all across, all over the country that normally don't text me. 
But this morning they said, just thought we'd text you, just thought I'd text you, praying for you. Had you on my heart this morning, praying for your church service. Preachers in Kentucky, West Virginia, all over. Brother Keith texted me this morning. He, he just out of the blue said, praying for you. It's going to be a good day. And here we are. God's done saved too. It's worth, it's worth them. Leaking faucet, it's worth it all. I, I'll take that any day. Amen. What I'm going to do, instead of changing, just save time, I'm going to baptize in what I got on. Normally I put my overalls on, but I'm going to put them on after church. Amen. Amen. All right, they're going to sing one. I'm going to go upstairs and get ready to baptize. All right. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. Before time began, you are on your throne, you are God alone, and right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne, you are God alone, you're the only God. You're the only God whose name and praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. You are God, that's just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. This is my brother Larry. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 